This is my 2001 Jaguar X-Type. I've actually given it to my dad, but I'm prepping it for the MOT, which is next week. So the first thing to do is to look over the bodywork. It does look very shiny, but that can be a bit uh, deceptive. You can see that he's been keeping it underneath a tree. So that all needs to be cleaned off. There's a lot of dust in the air, that all needs to be cleaned off. This is a real problem this time of year. All the blossom and the leaves because of the wind are getting down on the car. Um, and this all needs to be cleaned out straight away. Car's nice and clean inside, uh, everything's empty. Bodywork is very straight on this car, except that very unfortunately, he has scraped it down the side of the wall outside his house. At some point I will be replacing this bumper. That won't fail an MOT, but it just doesn't look good. We've got a little bit of corrosion coming through the wheel arch. That's had some paint on it. This is not perforation. If it was perforated, it would fail the MOT, but this is something that needs to be dealt with in the summertime. Something else to look for is bodged repairs, overspray, um, and you have to decide, if you're thinking about buying a car like this, can you put that right easily? Now this, this is plastic, so you can just buy another one for about 80 quid. This is the 2.5 V6, 196 brake horsepower, four wheel drive, 140 mile an hour top end. This is the 2001 model. You can see the bodywork is actually in really amazing condition for a car of that era. One of the first things I'll be doing is cleaning it. When you're doing an MOT or if you want to sell your car, make sure it is perfectly clean and that indicates that it's been looked after. Next thing to do is check the lights. Check all the controls inside the car. That's telling you you've left the lights on, so that part of it works. Put the ignition on, put it in reverse and check the reversing lights work. I've retrofitted sensors on here so as you walk up to it that sets the sensor off and the sensor is in there and you can just hear it and that actually is a digital readout and that's working fine. So we need to check all the instruments. So turn the ignition to second position, see all the lights come on. All the check lights are on, it's showing me the engine management light, the door lights, showing that everything works. Now you have to be very careful, watch the engine light, make sure that doesn't stay on. So that's uh, gone, the ABS light, check light comes up. So the only thing left on is the handbrake, which is obviously on, and the, and the seatbelt light, which should go off when I turn the seatbelt on. It's telling me I've got a door open. So presumably that's this one. Well, that's interesting. They've got a door open. Which one is that then? Because I've only opened one door. Press the trip button in. Turn it to position two. Test. Gauge. Press again. All the numbers come up. Press again. Testing the bulbs. Press again, testing some codes. The DTC one is the, is the interesting one, so look up that number, and look at that number, look at that number, look at that number, and we're back to the start now. While you're in the car, check the safety belts. Buckles are good, no fraying along the edges, and it actually correctly retracts. Now this one's a bit slack, because it's old, but it does work, so it's not a problem. Also check that it locks out like it's supposed to, which it does. While you're sitting in the car, just let it run up and check that everything works. So this car's got awesome air conditioning. Just turn the fan up a bit. 
should be able to hear that. It's set on 22, it's actually 21 outside, so I'm going to just put that down to about 17. And I prefer that setting. I can feel the air coming down by my legs. I can't feel any coming out here. Oh, it's because uh, for some reason that's. check they all work there's no leaves or rubbish or broken veins or anything like that yeah that's good that's working I'll just turn that down a bit that's lovely and cool um, you can't really check the defrost is working you can press the button and it shows that it kicks in turn that off you can check that each one works so that the blend door is working so press it to that one that's working that's working that's working that's working you can hear it that's all working while you're up at the windscreen make sure that those plastic trims are staying in mine are held with magnets they've got a bad habit of popping out and rattling but they don't in this car check that the um, CD and the radio is working. Um, obviously while you're sitting with the engine running just try the gears and see if it will pull it off the handbrake. So put it into first, the handbrake's on. Now it's pulling it forward, that's not good. That's because that's not done up tight. Well now it's really fighting it so the handbrake's working, that's good. Let's pop it into reverse. Lovely and smooth. Now nine times out of ten you'll have already done this just driving it but if it's somebody else's car it's worth doing that just to make sure especially if you're thinking about buying the car you really need the handbrake to work because that is a shed load of work to put that right if it's not correct have a look in the glove box there's the Jaguar book a mighty tome and in the back of the glove box there is another fuse box have a look at all those fuses make sure they're in good condition see if any of them have been changed um, if a lot of them have been changed, that's a bit of a warning sign. Check the electric windows work. They're one touch in the Jag. Nice, they both work. Now mine's the early model Jag, so the rear ones are hand driven and they tend to stick, so it's worth doing that every now and then. So just wind them up and down every now and then, because they do like that one, they do stick because oh, they just don't get opened and if they're worth cleaning those so that they don't stick again while we're here this piece of trim has got this rusty bubble in it this is actually just in the trim that's aluminium corrosion you can replace these but they're about 38 quid they're called a waste strip um, if you want to spend your money you can get a nice fresh one. Check if the rear handles stick up. If they stay up like that it means the pin inside's all corroded and that needs to be lubricated or dismantled. So with the engine running just listen to it, listen for any unnatural clicks or grinding sounds. That chunk is the air conditioning cutting in so that clutch is working. Everything's looking reasonable it's a bit dirtier than I would like it and we've got a lot of dust on there this can all be cleaned off and there's a leak there look see that so that's presumably coming out of here one of the recurring problems with these cars is that the water pump tends to leak and on this car it does it about every two years and you can see it really clearly there that pink is where the steel seal has come out and is leaking through the water pump so I need to take the pump off and reseal it. Now this car does have a problem with oil leaking from the top and going down to the bottom. So I'm going to take the engine cover off so I can just inspect what's underneath. We can see the top of the engine more clearly. You can see that this is actually now really dusty. Um, there's lots of sand in there. But there are no great signs of leakage. Now my theory is this leaks. You see this? I think this seal here, this leaks, it weeps and it goes down problem will be if it gets down onto 
the auxiliary belt. Now the auxiliary belt is down there. I changed this a couple of years ago and I can still see it's got the print and it's very clean and the oil is, hasn't got on it so that's a bonus. Um, but I will be cleaning all this oil off all the way down to the bottom because uh, that can be an MOT failure. Check the levels now. So obviously the washer bottle is nearly completely full. The brake master cylinder level is halfway between min and max, that's perfect. And this one is actually completely to the top. And what we see is a little bit of weeping. I'd be inclined to actually take a little bit of water out of that. I think that's got too much, I think it's been overfilled. You can take the header tank cap off only when the engine's cold. So I can put my foot, finger in there. That's actually quite warm, like a cup of tea. Um, there is a sediment in there. That is steel seal. That's been put in there because the uh, head gasket was leaking. Um, that is actually right up to the top. That little black marker in there is the top mark. I've just used this little siphon, which is one I use for uh, brake bleeding on a motorcycle, to take out 30 millilitres, um, just to reduce that slightly below that black mark. And I broke my siphon. They're only about a pound. Check the condition of all the rubbers. This T-piece here, this is part of the he um, heating system. This is well known for fracturing. Um, your car really needs to have the ribbed pipe on it because the original one splits. This goes down to the PCV valve, which is there. Um, and if that clogs up, your, your car will start running badly. And then buried down there is the thermostat. Check the quality and condition of the battery. I put this one on about maybe two years ago. Make sure that that's lovely and bright in there. These are all clean. These are all tight and corrosion free. Now I found that these tend to break after a long period of time and that's a replacement that I've put on. So watch out for that. Just quickly look in the fuse and relay box to make sure there's no creatures living in there. No blossom, no spiders. Um, that's all looking very clean and very healthy. Roll here, check the headlights are lovely and clean. I cleaned these with a 3M cleaning kit a couple of years ago. The garages will rip you off a treat for a new set of headlights when all you need is a 14 quid um, 3M cleaning kit and a drill. You need to check the condition of the radiator and the condenser. Now the radiator is behind there and it's new so that should be good but we'll look at that from behind it. The condenser, the air conditioning condenser that's got a bit of a problem so I'll be gluing that back on with Araldite metal. Remember that's only a cooling fin that's where the actual fluid goes through. We're gonna to have to keep an eye on that. I don't know why that should have done that. It's probably got caught when it was being cleaned or something. So I'm just gluing that vein back down with Araldite metal um, this is pretty good stuff and it's heat resistant so it should last a long time. Now this car is quite dirty because of the COVID-19 lockdown. It's hardly been used. It only goes out like once every two weeks to go down to the hospital. Um, but if you were buying a car, I would look really carefully at things like this. This is where it hasn't been cleaned properly and no one's been taking its attention to it. When a car isn't cleaned properly, it normally means it's also not maintained properly. Um, and this car at the moment has all those signs of it having been left out in the yard. Oil dripping out, um, full of bits that are going to hold rust into it. So down the back there is the ECM. And look at all that crap that's been allowed to get down there. That will hold water into the ECM and then that will stop your car going. So the ECM, electronic control module, or some people call it ECU, electronic control unit. That is why they fail. I'm just using the garage hoover to get all the dust and blossom and leaves and uh, it's a good idea to get a really long screwdriver and break up the dust to get that out as well because when it's wet that holds corrosion into it. And down there just use it to clean the channel out to get the hoover on it. Look inside there, that's all lovely and bright and clean and oily, that's the timing chain, very bright. Um, so that's good. You're looking for white deposits, um, particularly in the cap, to show that water is getting into the system. Check the oil level. Oil level is on maximum. It's probably hard to see. Oil level is on maximum and the oil is really clean. 
um, which isn't a surprise because I didn't do it that long ago. Check the power steering reservoir, clean it all first because it really picks up dirt. Just look inside um, and you can see that that's nice and full, it's up to that grid so that's good. Um, I've never actually ever had to do anything with this, they shouldn't leak. If they do there's obviously a problem with seals down in the rack downstairs somewhere. Check that the bonnet catches are in really good condition and properly greased up and remember that the Jag has got two. It's a bit of an issue with the hood cables as they're called. Um, they tend to break on these cars, that's not happened to me, but something to look out for. Another thing worth doing is checking how good the gas struts are on the boot and on the bonnet. And what I've done is I've actually put the bonnet down halfway and it's still holding it. So just drop down to there and you should drop it from six inches. Yeah, all good, all working properly. Go around and look at all the tyres, make sure the tread's good, make sure there's no damage. These are relatively new tyres. They're cheap ones, they're only about 55 quid each, but they're really good, they last 20,000 miles. They're a bit noisy. So if we look in the boot, the Jags have the emergency 50 mile an hour tyres. Presumably you could get a full size tyre in there if you wanted to. Just check that it's in really good condition. I mean this one's, I don't think it's ever been used. Um, and pump it up. That's a bit of random electronics for the retrofitted rear sensors. There's the towing eye. And that broken plastic thing is to help you take the covers off the locking wheel nuts. Which this car doesn't have. So you might want to check for locking wheel nuts. I took them off because they were all buggered. and They weren't worth keeping. Underneath there is the jack. Make sure that's in there. There's a spare bulb kit and some spare tools and the wheel wrench. Just worth knowing where they are and that they are on the car. On the back tyres, look out for signs of scrubbing on the inside and that one's definitely got it. That's not good, that means the camber is out and the one on the other side is the same. These Jags are really prone to rust in the seals. And when I bought this car, which is now nearly eight years ago, it was all rotted out here. All this was gone, but it's actually, we fiberglassed that. Because it's not structural, it's not an MOT fail. But I have had to have these sills welded. I have had to have the sills welded at least four times. And usually you have it done every year. Um, so you'll see there's a massive long repair section there. There's a brake and it's repaired again. And it's repaired again and this is all now rock solid so pretty hopeful that we're not going to have to do it again this year. That's all the basic easy stuff I think. Now to start looking at the suspension which is quite often a fail on these particularly the drop links. The drop links in the front which are behind the front wheel there the rubbers tend to split so we need to look at those. So if you turn the wheels to one side so you don't have to jack the car up Look at this boot, make sure it's not split. This is the end of the drive shaft. Make sure that these boots on the end of this isn't split and these are really solid. If these rattle, that's an MOT fail. These look like they're all in good condition. Again, it wasn't that long ago I changed these. So looking underneath at the back, there's the exhaust pipe on the driver's side. That's, although that's rusty, it is actually in really good condition and these seem to last forever, these exhaust pipes. Sorry, there's the main coil spring. I changed that not long ago. That's in good condition. All the rubbers are in good condition. That's all looking sound. This is the anti-roll bar. There's the drop link. They've been replaced. They're in good condition. They look a little bit rusty, but that's to be expected. There's the anti-roll bar bushes. They're in good condition. Now it's worth getting a hold of this. Move it. It shouldn't get any movement. It should just be pulling the whole car. That's showing that's good. So now we're in the middle of the car. This bit with a number on is the petrol tank. There is the petrol filter, which is lovely and shiny. I changed that not long ago. And that is a lovely clean new handbrake cable. The fuel line, you can see that fuel line is quite corroded and also the brake pipes. Nowadays they try and fail you on these. I can't see that there's anything particularly wrong with that. 
but you have to watch out with that. Unscrupulous people put grease on them um, to cover up the rust. You can do a bounce test on the shocks, which is just by putting your hand on there and doing your own weight in. You should get one and a half bounces each time on each corner. Right at the front here. Well, there's a bit of a creak in there. Even though I'm bouncing the front of the car, it's the back of the car that's creaking. If you jack the car up under the spring plate and then bounce the car and it stops making the noise, it means it's one of the control arms needs lubricating. Incidentally, this is a good test of the handbrake. If you jack the back wheel off the ground and then use the wheel wrench, the Jaguar wheel wrench to undo the back wheel, if the wheel goes round when the handbrake's on, the handbrake's not working properly. In my case, it's working fine. I've done videos on how to find which one's creaking and nine times out of 10, it is this joint here. So I'm just gonna loosen that off, pack it with molly grease and put it back together. Um, if you've never taken this apart, it's really difficult. Um, you probably need a heat gun to loosen it off, but I've taken this apart a few times so it shouldn't be that difficult. So this is the lower control arm and you can see that all the rubbers have perished on this. So that's a definite MOT fail. So I'll have to get a pair of these and replace them. Uh, fortunately, because I've done this before, it takes literally minutes to get them off the car. If you've never done it before, you're looking at hours. I always wonder how the cars can go so wrong in such a short time. I mean, it's one year since the last MOT, everything was done last year. And the answer is, this isn't my car anymore. I don't look after it every day. Um, and it mostly sits out on the drive. It gets a ride out every two weeks, maybe. It stands out in the wind and the rain and the weather. And um, that's when they go wrong. The other thing is, is hooky parts. When I first did this car up, I ended up buying a lot of hooky parts off of eBay. And they only last a couple of years. So yeah, you're control arm might have cost you 40 quid but you're only going to get two years out of it so if you're prepared to repair it every two years that's great otherwise a pair of control arms is 150 quid so you've got to balance it up against what money you've got and what you want to spend and how much uh, you're going to use the car i should be going for the 40 quid ones to repair this